You're listening to KEXP at 90.3 FM in Seattle. You can find us online at kexp.org, streaming around the world. I'm Cheryl Waters. I am so excited to be in the studio with this band right now. It's Downtown Boys. Welcome. Thank you so much. So great to have you here. You're playing an all-ages show tonight at the Vera Project, which I cannot recommend enough. We thank you so much for stopping by. Do a live set today. What are you going to kick it off with? We'll kick it off with Somos Chulas, No Somos Pendejas, and this song goes out to Mexico and Puerto Rico and everyone who's healing there from the natural disasters and all of the disasters caused by capitalism and this country in both places. Somos Chulas, No Somos Pendejas. Boys live on KEXP. I'm enough. I want more. I want more. I want more. I'm enough.
Downtown Boys live on KEXP. It is so exhilarating to see you live. Thank you so much for bringing it here in the studios today. Of course, thank you. So great to have you here. A brand new album out on Sub Pop called Cost of Living and a great follow-up to your last album, Full Communism. You guys are, you were formed in Providence, Rhode Island, and off the top of my head, I might have quickly said, boy, I don't know of many bands from there, but then when I stopped to think of it, I could think of a ton of bands from that little state, La Savie Fav, a Kristen Hirsch is from there, Deer Tick, uh, I could just go on and on. So I'm curious, do you feel that there's a strong independent music community there for you now? Um, I think that Providence is a very special city and a really special place. And so I think that there is a really supportive community. But I think like, especially like in the more rock music scene, it's required like a lot of women musicians, a lot of um, people of color who are musicians and a lot of people who were raised in Providence. Um, or who have been there for a long time, not just to go to college there, to really make that community really supportive. Um, and, you know, it's an old industrial city, so there's, like, lots of old factories and warehouses and things like that that kind of, like, lend itself to that desire to use spaces and to try and create, um, you know, different cultural moments. But there's surprisingly many, many different communities um, that play music in Providence, and I think we're very fortunate to be part of, of a supported one. Talking about the diversity in communities, I know there's a big Portuguese and Cape Verdean community in Providence. Are those communities represented on the music scene? Um, so there's like, yeah, there are a lot of people from a lot of migrants that live in Rhode Island and we definitely know people who are Cape Verdean and who play music and who um, do art and are activists. Um, but yeah, I don't know if it's like, if. Their, their like ancestral identity is like at the forefront. <laughs> how did this group come together? Can you in, can you all introduce yourselves, or someone introduce the band, and tell me how you came together as Downtown Boys? Yeah, my name is Joey De Francesco. At this point, we have three people in the band named Joey, so that's why I say my last name. <laughs> so that's a prerequisite number yeah, one to yeah, be in the band. Exactly. So that's that's pretty much the entire story <laughs> of how we came together. Um, no, um, so yeah, me and. Victoria met working at a hotel in 2011, um, and we were working together and also working to uh, form a union at a hotel in Providence, Rhode Island. Um, and we had a, a bit of a different lineup in the band at that point. Um, so after like touring and making records for all these years, um, different people have come in and out of the band. Um, so I guess people can just say how they got there if you wanna yeah, start. Yeah, yeah, I'm uh, Joe DeGeorge. Um, and I, uh, I first saw the band in a basement in Providence uh, and immediately became uh, intrigued and a fan. Vicky pointed out to me that I was already in the pit and didn't even know it. <laughs> And uh, ended up in a role where I was, uh, you know, keeping guitar amps from falling down at that show and found myself in a supportive role <laughs> since then of the band. So that's how I'm here. My name is Mary, and I was also a fan of Downtown Boys and had toured with them and played shows with them. And I joined the band about two years ago when they needed a bassist for the full communism U.S. tour. And I said yes, and then I moved to Providence to be in it. And I'm not sure if our other Joe, he has a microphone over there. I can't I, see you I way do. across the room. All right. <laughs> and my name is Joey Dubeck. I have been a fan of Downtown Boys for many years. I've been in the band for three weeks. I love it. It's the best split-second decision I've ever made in my life. You have, um, I've read in some interviews with you that you have so many wonderful influences that just span the gamut. Some of them you've toured with. I played some today. Uh, Sheer Mag, Screaming Females, Algiers, but also Sun Ra. And Victoria, I know you're a huge Bruce Springsteen fan, which <laughs> delights me when I come across that. People seem to want to uh, just simplify your music as punk music. You definitely have that DIY aesthetic. Um, but it's a lot more nuanced than that. And I'm curious what you're trying to do in the songs and you know, your live shows are just so dynamic. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that we've always wanted to contextualize our music um, within music and then beyond that. And so we were really fortunate to make Cost of Living. All the songs were written um, over the course of two years before the current inauguration of this 45th president. Um, but there is so much protest music being put out right now that clearly had to have been written before because it takes forever to put out a record. Um, and there are so many people like speaking um, truth to power and like putting their themselves and their experiences out there. And I think that that's like really helping to break through sort of these like rash generalizations like love is love and all are welcome here. It's like, yeah, but what does that mean? Like what are beliefs without demands for that to actually be realized? And I think that that's a lot of what we're trying to do is we're trying to like collectively as a band but then also in the spaces that we play in like really build like those demands and like for ourselves and for each other and for like the world that will help realize like all of these beliefs and truths that we know exist and um and so I think the nuance gets at having to knowing what it's like to kind of never be brown enough, never be white enough, never be rich enough to do something, but working really hard to get the resources to do it, like never having land, but knowing how to make space. And so like holding those contradictions and being able to float with them and work through them, um, I think is like really what we're trying to do. That's really valuable and interesting that you say that because I think a lot of people are quick to say without thinking, oh, your music is so topical, but your music has always been topical. You've always been writing about what's going on in your life and people were writing about these things and putting them into music long before that. And I think right now um, you're providing something that is important to people, but you've done that on any record. I mean, all of your shows have really been very cathartic. I'm curious how crowds are responding to your music now. Does it feel different or are you just seeing people, you know, experiencing your shows as they always have? I think it's a mix. Um, like you said, these issues have been going on forever and especially for more vulnerable and marginalized people. These kinds of uh, violences have always existed. So those things we're speaking to, as you're saying, have always been there. Um, and those fights against them have always been going on. Now, obviously, there is a bit of an intensification and say of those uh, like anxieties and fears and also resistance movements are having to take a new form and are ramping up. So I think there is somewhat more of a sense at the shows of it needing to be a catharsis um, of people needing a release, maybe needing to feel some kind of community, um, at least like for that hour or two that they're at the concert. I know personally, I feel that way, and like as a band, we feel that way of like in wanting to like feel and create that space as much as we can. Um, so yeah, I think I think it's like intensified out of those previously existing things. Well, you're making very meaningful music, music that's speaking to people. Um, your lyrics are chock full of um, great messages and information, but gosh darn, you're damn good musicians on top of it all. You're making really relevant and fun music. I understand you got to work with Guy from Fugazi on the making of this record, and I'm curious what that was like, how that came about, and talk about the music and the making of the record. I mean, it was interesting that we worked with had the honor to work with Guy because uh, Mary actually asked Alison Wolf, um, like from Bratmobile, about um, producing and who she thought would be good. And it was her recommendation to work with Guy. Um, and so that's pretty cool, like that it was her recommendation. And um, it really was this thing where it's like, I was really nervous because I, for so many of us, he's such a hero and Fugazi is so incredible and so foundational. Um, and he especially just like always used, like always made these incisions into whatever he was doing. And um, it was the same in the studio. Like he, he is a master at producing, like he can hear things that I don't think most human ears can hear. Um, but aside from those technical skills, he was just like a really incredible mentor and like really just like opened up to us. And, you know, I think especially 
having had one of our hands in like the punk scene or, you know, I feel like we're part of lots of different buckets of musical history um, and spaces, but I'm like, wow, like Guy was so incredible and like didn't mansplain, like, you know, there was no like power over dynamic with us. Like he was really trying to like walk us through some kind of like tunnel uh, to get to this other side that we, we believed in and that we wanted on the record. And so he was sort of like a guide. Um, and I just thought of how different that is from like a lot of the like punk bros and who like to like mansplain me Fugazi. Um, it's like, damn this person who's actually in this band and made this piece of history happen is so, so cool and, like, has such a great, like, way to be. That's so wonderful to hear that. You really did make a beautiful piece of history. The new album from Downtown Boys called Cost of Living. Love to hear more music from it. This song is called Lift That Bite. It goes out to Bruce Springsteen and Harry and the Potters and gauche, and pinkwash, and rage against the machine. Downtown Boys live on KEXP, a brand new album out on Sub Pop Records. One more song? 
Yes, thank you to KEXP. Thank you so much to Sub Pop and to Nick Turner for making this happen. This song is called The Wall, and it goes out to everyone who's affected by this immigration system. And it's a reminder also for people who are DACA recipients to try and get your papers filed before October 5th. So we need to fight so that a wall is just a wall and nothing more at all. Downtown Boys live on KEXP, the new album, Cost of Living. And Joey and Victoria, I want to give a quick shout out to Spark Mag. You're doing some amazing work uh, supporting artists, making meaningful um, contributions to art and music through that. Can you just talk a minute for about that? Yeah, Spark Mag came out of a really great organization called Demand Progress, who do a lot of work fighting for uh, civil liberties and against the police state. 
Um, they're based uh, partially in, in Providence, Rhode Island, so we knew one of the, the founders of the organization, David Siegel. So he got in touch with us to make Spark Mag, so it's the sparkmag.com, and it's kind of the cultural wing, so we try to highlight artists who are speaking about politics, artists who might be underrepresented or improperly represented in the mainstream music press, um, and kind of give them like a real platform to talk about their work and the meaning behind it. Well, it's a great, um, I've, I've dug into that website, lost myself down a rabbit hole there, lots of great stuff there, and so great that you're helping to get those artists uh, um, in front of people, but also trying to help them a little bit financially as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we really try to pay writers, try to get bands money to really try to make it a sustainable <laughs> thing uh, economically, because that's just such a big part of the music industry that is awful for artists and writers, as we all know, is uh, just the sustainability of it. And we can't just pretend like money doesn't exist in this industry. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in today for this fantastic new record. Again, Cost of Living from Downtown Boys out on Sub Pop Records. Tonight, they play an all-ages show at the Vera, and tomorrow they'll be at Mississippi Studios in Portland. So great to have you here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've got a tune to KEXP Seattle. Oh, my God. That was so good. That thank was you amazing. So much. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, thanks a lot. Thanks so much. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. Discover new music at kexp.org.